research on old world Photoshop, we began to notice a trend with old postcards from the 1900s showing early examples of compositing. There isn't much information on these. If there is a catalog, it's not easy to come by. But many of these are early examples of photo manipulation. They had surreal real photo postcards in which they would attempt to trick people with the illusion of photography. As we continued to look through these old postcards, a very strange and unsettling trend started to become apparent. It began with just simple baby postcards. At first thought, it seems like any ordinary postcard. But as with the same sky postcard mystery, where the author began to see a trend of a variety of postcards, well, there is a category of postcards that deserves its own name and label, but it doesn't seem very well known, as there are no websites or videos explaining this topic. We shall call it the mystery of the repopulation postcards. There are other names for this style, such as baby postcards. By the end of this video, you'll be shocked at how many of these there are. We're talking in the thousands. We found one reference to what these cards were in a book on Amazon named Babylon, Surreal Babies, in which the author describes these same peculiar 1900s postcards and how they were deeply influential to many famous artists, including Salvador Dali. Yet, the author even admits that little is known of their history. In order to understand why we've labeled them repopulation postcards, a thorough understanding of resets, Tartaria, orphan trains, incubators, asylums, and oddfellows will be necessary. These cards depict babies being grown. There are many different styles within this category. One of the most interesting is the Cabbage Patch Babies, a variety of themes involving growing babies. Babies on plants. Babies on mushrooms. Babies in the water. Babies in a nest. Babies in eggs being hatched. Then the babies arrive on the train. There's something airy about these photos, as if someone's trying to tell us something. We've also got kids in cabbage patches. Hmm, does this have anything to do with the cabbage patch kids? So where do babies come from? In the early 1900s, the most common answer given to children would simply be that the stork would bring the babies, or that they were found in a cabbage patch. But why would babies be found in cabbage patches? 
The legend of the Cabbage Patch Kids involves a young boy named Xavier who meets a mystical fairy bunny bee creature, so a hybrid or chimera, and he follows this bunny bee through a secret tunnel behind a waterfall. On the other side of this waterfall, he finds that babies are being produced in a cabbage patch. The stork, known as Colonel Casey, would then come and pick up the babies. He even has his own uniform. So he's a worker, a soldier, as well as the Cabbage Patch Kids official historian that would then deliver the babies to their new homes. Not only that, but there's an evil witch named Lavender McDay. She and her weasel and jackrabbit henchmen are literally trying to enslave the Cabbage Patch Kids to be miners to dig for gold in the valley. You can get all the exposition for the lore in the story through their 10 song album. It goes over how they were created to the witch to even a lament about their enslavement. It's pretty dark. The original concept for the cloth dolls was created by Martha Nelson Thomas, and she called them doll babies. And the story really had nothing to do with cabbages or chimeras or witches. It wasn't until Xavier Roberts, or Xavier, like the little boy in the story, hijacked her design that it became what it is today. So I can't help but wonder if Xavier Roberts just came up with a story all on his own, like did it come to him from the collective consciousness, or does he just have a soft spot for child labor? There's actually a place you can go in White County, Georgia where they do live births, and you can look it up on YouTube to see what I'm talking about. The bunny bee character also is a hybrid creature of two animals that both symbolize rebirth and resurrection on a mass scale. As we know, rabbits reproduce in droves, and the bee symbolism makes me think of a hive, or a queen or source where all the offsprings originate from. It would seem that this is some sort of reference to babies being created in a lab on a mass scale. Why were there so many orphans? Most common answer will be, you know, the baby boom. But this didn't happen until 1946 to 1964. These postcards are from 1890 to 1910, and there's really no explanation for the burst of orphans that we see being brought into the United States, or the amount of orphanages and asylums that exist that no longer seem to be necessary. Could the baby boom narrative be a way to sweep this part of history under the rug? The orphanages were all shut down, and after the 60s, people just stopped having babies and getting married after World War II, according to the narrative. Then there are the incubators of the 1900s, it's difficult to keep premature babies alive with modern technology, yet they were doing this back in 1835 in Europe. They turned this into a sideshow, where at the world fairs, they would show off these child hatcheries, these incubators of live children. And for some reason, the royals would come and witness these events. So there's this genetic manipulation cloning idea in which these babies are actually being grown in some sort of pods Perhaps the symbolism of the Cabbage Patch mirrors that process. Humans do resemble plants in the way that we're connected to a stem in our fetal state, and our whole lives are spent ripening. In the fetal abduction theory, we typically see a nurse-looking woman with either a fishing hook or a fishing net pulling a child out of the water. Perhaps the hook and net represent medical tools and the water amniotic fluid. In either scenario, it would make sense that these babies have to end up in incubators or hatcheries. And it begs the question, how did all these premature babies get here? If women back in you know these days were having babies prematurely, why in such large numbers? And the babies all being babies, they'd have to have traveled there somehow within a short period of time. What are the chances that so many premature babies were driven from wherever their mothers were to these incubators all in time? And why do they charge people to view them as if this was some sort of exhibition or sideshow and not a pressing matter of life and death? For centuries, the stork has been thought of as a symbol for new beginnings and family lineage. The idea that this creature represents life-giving events also makes sense because storks are monogamous creatures, and they mate only once every year with their partners that they've chosen beforehand, choosing mates based solely on personality instead of looks like many other birds. Now we've got kids inside a train. Orphan trains. Why so many orphans? Were these orphans taken from their families? Were they trained to instruct a new generation of genetically created babies? Or were they womb-napped babies? And we've got kids growing on trees. Kids being carried by storks. 
The Greek goddess Hera and her Roman counterpart Juno also favor the stork. And I'm sure you guys remember that quirky little teen pregnancy movie from the 2000s. And I suspect that Artemis of Ephesus is an ancient fertility symbol used by the elite to signify their ability to reseed a new population. So we've got hooks removing babies, kids in the water with a woman holding a net or fishing rod, the water, the amniotic fluid, pulling children from the wombs of their mothers, perhaps. Could that be why there are so many premature babies or are they genetically manipulated? Cloning is not impossible. Just look at Miracle Millie. I think that the movie Aeon Flux is a great example. Hollywood is definitely alluding to this reality of artificial repopulation. The Cabbage Patch Kids sort of reminds me of those medieval occult books that depict humans growing from roots in the grounds or mandrakes, which are known to have occult properties for making one go insane. The babies are also ready to join their elite clubs, and they're even given top hats. Technology clothes in empty cities babies floating in on boats all signifying children being born or found and then taken by the mother the one with the basket yet this is a figure that represents the government's function as a mother a corporate operation of generating foundlings in order to fill their newly emptied and burned cities with new humans Whoever made these postcards are trying to tell us something very dark about the world we live in, as if it's humorous. There's an extraordinary amount of work put into these early photo manipulations. One would think there should be a good resource for these old postcards, but they are rare and difficult to find. Babies with hats. Babies in the empty cities. Babies with new technology. Babies in the classroom. Babies being brought in boats. And babies being grown in a variety of different situations. Is this some type of clever reference to the cloning of humans? We know of the sudden rise in orphans during the 1800s, but where do they all come from? Where do babies come from? All we can hope is that our minds may be unveiled. Let go of everything you think to be true. Relax the mind and ask the question, do I truly understand what this reality is?